Now we're going to go ahead and solve an example that demonstrates the idea of finding principal strains um, and for that matter in general the concept of strain transformations in other words transforming from the original picture to some other picture and that picture could very well be the principal picture now before we do that i just want to highlight a few more things here remember we said that this picture this these discussions are based on equilibrium alone and therefore we don't care what the type of material behavior is likewise this picture here is only governed by deformations alone and we don't care where these those deformations come from they might be uh, they might be isotropic material behavior uh, that that it delivers this result or might be anisotropic could be elastic inelastic we don't care where the strains come from these transformations the calculations will hold um, exactly uh, in the same fashion in all cases um, however Whenever, for instance, I'm making interpretations as such, those do rely on the material behavior. So when I write here these relations, I have assumed a state of um, generalized, I have assumed a state of elastic deformations and also isotropic elastic deformations. Now, with that in mind, the example that I'm going to solve is also going to make that assumption. And that assumption, ultimately, what it will try to do is it will try to make a connection between these. In other words, there will be a state of strain and associated with that, there will be a state of stress. The relation between the two is going to be covered by the equations of isotropic linear elasticity. If it is not elastic, the discussions that I am about to make will change. If it is not elastic, uh, isotropic the discussions I'm about to make will change then the discussion I'm about to make is valid only for isotropic linear elasticity and in that case so first of all if I'm given that picture in fact if I'm given that picture I can easily calculate that picture using generalized Hooke's law good it's easy um, so now if I'm given either picture I can go to that picture as well right so in other words if i give you this you can calculate that or directly given this you know already this you can go to that picture using the methods i just summarized and which we will demonstrate or given this you can demonstrate calculate that picture go here etc in every scenario but suppose you take a step from the stress you already know what the stress is and you go to that picture now, once you go to that picture, suppose I want to obtain that picture. Is it possible that I make a jump from here to there? So without having to go back, calculating this general state of general, this general picture, original picture, going to the principal strain picture, is it possible that I instead jump directly from here to there? Now, it turns out the answer is yes. And the answer is yes because of a very special reason. Linear isotropic elasticity. Um, well, the linear part can be discarded to some extent, but presently that's all we know about, but isotropy is essential, which says that if you have a state of strain that is associated with a state of stress, how? Through, say, generalized Hooke's law, right? If these two are related, then these two are related as follows, okay? One, the principle directions of strain match with the principal directions of strain we're showing this without proof but it turns out that if you were to calculate individually these two pictures the principal directions would be exactly the same right this you can easily try for some general scenario you'll see that they are the same okay but we're not proving it so that's the first observation and that's why i've drawn these orientations with that in mind in the same fashion um, so they are the same, okay? One is aligned with one, two is aligned with two, three aligned with three. Um, so finally, the second point is once you have a picture that is principal or otherwise, doesn't matter. The relation between stress and strain is always of the generalized Hooke's formulation form. So in other words, as a specific example, here I could write that, for instance, epsilon 1 is equal to 1 over the Young's modulus 
the stress in the corresponding direction. Direction is the same because now I just told you that the principal directions match. So it's sigma 1 minus nu the Poisson effect and the stresses in the remaining directions, sigma 2 plus sigma 3. Okay. And you can do so for epsilon 2, epsilon 3 as well. How about the shear strains? Is it 1 over g times the shear stress? Yes, always, but we don't have to do that here because on the principal picture there is no shear strain because there is also no shear stress. The pictures align, no shear strain, no shear stress. So 0 equals 0 would be those. So in the principal picture you have only three equations to work with in terms of the strains because there are no shear strains. But apart from that, in the case of isotropy, you can also ask the following question. Well, suppose somehow I started from that picture and I went there and I calculated all of this and actually the question I'm trying to answer is well, does the absolute maximum shear stress in the structure exceed the, um, exceed the strength of the material? So once I know gamma max, I may want to go ahead and calculate tau max. And do I have to somehow go back here, go through here and compare that value additionally? No, it turns out that if the material is isotropic, then because of exactly that um, observation, tau max is simply equal to, or let me write it in the usual manner with the usual scaling, gamma max is actually equal to simply 1 over g tau max. Okay. And that is going to apply to any one of these. So tau 3 over g is going to be gamma 3, and tau 1 over g is going to be gamma 1, etc. Okay. So this, again, is a observation that is strictly going to be valid in the case of isotropic linear elasticity and not if it is anisotropic, not if it's not uh, elastic. The individual discussions have been true for any irrespective of where these are coming from but now that I link both of them saying that the principal directions match and these relations can still be employed in exactly the same way I employed them for XYZ then um, this assumes isotropic linear elasticity. And that is consistent with the notion of isotropy. There is directional independence. The material is insensitive to the direction. And here, I'm writing the state of stress with respect to some other coordinate directions. And the relations still hold in exactly the same way because the material is insensitive to the direction. Okay. So now, I think we are in quite good shape to go ahead and discuss the problem that is of interest to us.